Hello, thank you for joining me. My name is Tim Cole. I wanted to talk just a few minutes about relationships and how important relationships are and, and one of the primary benefits that come to us through relationships that we can't get uh, any other way. For some biblical context, everything starts in the book of Genesis and we find God creating everything in six days. It's good, it's good, it's good. Day after day, it's good. And then creates man and creates you and I through Adam and Eve. And he said, it's very good. The first thing that we see in the biblical account that was not good was that man was alone. Man had, Adam had named all the animals. He had gone through um, so much of his assignment and was busy about his assignment. He was, he was taking care of creation because Adam uh, came first, Adam and Eve were together in one before God put Adam to sleep and took the bone or the rib out. And he made Adam, Eve out of Adam as the biblical account of creation goes. So that time before Adam and Eve were two, Adam was alone. And even though he found purpose in his function, in what he did, and so much of us, we, we do that. And there's, it's, there's not, it's not that that's totally inappropriate, that we don't find some meaning in the function of life and what we do. We meet someone new and we say, hey, my name is Tim. And uh, what's your name? And we find out, hey, your name's Rob. So my first question, almost always, my first question is, so what do you do, Rob? And uh, culture, the society we grew up in, uh, has taught us to find more value than we should or need more value added to us, defined in us by what we do, the function of what we do, rather than who we are and who we are with. Again, we want to talk about relationships. The first thing in the biblical account that was not good was that Adam was alone. Not that he wasn't fulfilling his function, not that he wasn't fulfilling his destiny, not that he wasn't uh, operating in his giftings and callings. He was doing all of that. And he was under the blessing of God already. Uh, Genesis 1.28, and the Lord blessed them, and he said. So the blessing came before any function. They were already blessed in the image of God. He was in the image of God. He, car he carried an identity. He carried the blessing of God. He was fulfilling his function. And yet it still wasn't good that he was alone. <clears throat> and so, pardon me, I'd just like to suggest to you that relationship fulfills a function for us or fulfills or brings to us something that we can't get any other way. Your job cannot fulfill you in this way. What you do, whether it's inside the church or outside the church, it's all kingdom. There's no laity and clergy. That's, that's a false wall. That's like the same false wall that was between Jew and Gentile, between male and female. There's no clergy and lady. So regardless of where you find your work, your ability to provide for your family and get income, inside or outside the church is not relative or relevant. What is relevant is what kind of relationships do you have? Because your work cannot fulfill a basic core need of humanity. And that need is for relationship. It's also interesting to me that Adam already had the relationship with God. So Adam was in relationship with God in the, in the garden, fulfilling his function, using his gifts. And yet, I don't mean to say that relationship with God is not enough in that uh, it, it is primary. It's, it's the core. And yet, even in the garden, isn't it interesting? Think the thought. Even in the garden, the perfect setting, the perfect environment, the perfect opportunity, the perfect setup, Adam in relationship with God God looks back at Adam in the perfect setup with Adam doing the perfect thing. And God's assessment of Adam is that it's not good that he's alone. So I would suggest to you that this me and Jesus thing is amazing. 
it is so personal and intimate, my relationship with the Lord uh, and his love for me. But I would suggest to you that in the context of how God built us, it's not, in, it was never intended by God to be enough. I know that some of you are like, oh, that sounds like a God's, it's just me and God. Well, I think that also comes from some of the twists of hurt and rejection that we've carried all these years or, or these, these months or weeks. We adopt, we allow our experiences to shape what we believe and what we think. And they write on our hearts and we say, well, that's okay. I don't need friends or I don't need someone close to me or I don't need a Jonathan or a David or I don't need a Paul and Barnabas. I don't need a Peter, James and John like Jesus did. And, and someone would say, well, it's a stress to say that Jesus needed them. Well, I, I want to say to you that God in the flesh emptied himself. Jesus emptied himself and lived life just as you and I as a man. Now, he was still God. And yet he limited his access to his godlike uh, character traits, not character traits, his godlike abilities, so that his function on the earth was just like you and I live. And he needed relationship. And so here we are confronted with this very first thing in creation that, that was not good. And the fix to that thing that was not good was God giving Adam human relationship. So I want to suggest to you that while we're going after God, it's very, let me, let me use a New Testament um, passage to help illustrate this. Paul says, if you, if you have faith in James, that's awesome, but show me your faith by your works. In other words, faith is an internal Spiritual commodity, if you will. That's how often we look at these, these, these things as spiritual commodities and we have faith. James says, if you have faith, which is internal, in, invisible, it's inside, it's intangible, show me that faith in a tangible way. And I believe that's the same in relationship. And in, in, in John tells us, in 1 John, he says, listen, if you say you love God, but you don't love your brother or sister, in other words, what is he saying? If you, you can say you have this perfect relationship with God, but if it doesn't translate and have outlet through human relationship, then you're actually a liar. You are deceived. You, you don't believe, you, you believe what is not true. In other words, if, if I can make this extrapolation with those three biblical pictures or passages. It's not that relationship with God is not enough. It's that God designed us to be fulfilled and have and need something on a human level. And that's very important. There's multiple, it's so that in the human exchange of relationship in the human realm, we get to know him in the middle of that relationship in a way that we would never know him otherwise. We, we are myopic beings. We have a perspective through which we see and experience life. And that experience and that, well, that, uh, that uh, perspective, that lens, if you will, is static. And that's why uh, we, most of us, all of us, I would say, live with certain blind spots. In the human realm, we live with blind spots because our lens is not a 360 lens. Our lens is, we don't have eyes in the back of our heads. Our lens, our eyes are in the front of our being and we're looking straight forward. And there are things that we don't necessarily see because we're not aware of, not necessarily saying that we're deceived. It's just that we don't see them. And through relationship in, a, in the human realm, God's designed us to be able to um, utilize those relationships uh, to add value to our lives in so many ways. And one of those, one of the most important ways is perspective. Other people can see into us. That's why it's more than just a casual relationship that's necessary, right? We can have casual relationships, but there, there needs to be the inner three like Jesus had, Peter, James, and John. There needs to be the 12 in our lives. So it's another layer of intimacy, but it's into me see. And 
when you have three people who are close to you and can see your real life, they're lending their eyes of perspective, that, or they're lending their vantage of your life to you. And that value gives you uh, more of a 360 view of what's really going on inside of you and through you and out of you into the rest of human experience. So I, I just wanna challenge you and encourage you how, how valuable relationship is. First vertical with God, Adam, where are you? God, God created us in his image and in his likeness. And so this vertical relationship is the key for everything. But it, it's not, it's never, never was intended by God to be a me and Jesus thing. It was always intended to be a we and Jesus thing. Paul said it this way about another subject, about having the mind of Christ. He didn't say I or you have the mind of Christ to the Corinthians. He said, we have the mind of Christ. Now think that thought. It's not that you and I as individuals won't have grace to and knowledge and imparted knowledge by God, by Holy Spirit for whatever circumstance we're individually going through. We will. He's the Spirit of God. He leads us and guides us into all truth. He will do that individually. And yet Paul said very carefully that it's not you individually or me individually that has the mind of Christ. Think about it. Which one of us would have enough perspective, 360 view, to know, to see what's actually going on and have the mind of Christ in any one moment? It's really prideful of us to think that us as individuals could have that place. But the intention of God was never that we live myopically, or never that we live individually, or never that we live alone. But in the collective we, when we have Peter, James, and Johns in our lives, when we have like David, a Jonathan in our life, when we have the 12, our kind of pat, our gang that we, we hang with, or our small group, or our, and then we have the 70 like our church. And when we have those tiers of intimacy, those, those spheres of intimacy that are working properly in our lives, that we embrace and welcome. Now relationship, human relationship, is now the context through which God can come and inhabit, right? Two or three are gathered in his name. There he will be in his midst. That's relationship. Is he with us individually? Of course he is. But he's with us corporately in a different way, in a, in a powerful way that we also need. And so it wasn't good that Adam would be alone. It's not good that we're alone. I want to encourage you that God has seeded the best things in life into relationships. He has some great things planned for you. And some of those things are between you and him, like Jacob at, at Jabbok, or uh, when he was um, going to meet Esau, his brother, and he had kind of swindled him out of his birthright and all that. You know the story of Jacob and Esau. And here he is by himself. He sent his family on ahead of him. And he was alone with God and he wrestled with God and some amazing, powerful things transpired in his life because he had those alone times. But I'm, I'm, I just want to suggest to you, it's not only in the alone times. In fact, there are th some things in our lives that we will never see and never conclusions will never arrive at decisions we will never make. And in fact, drilling just down back to that core thing that Adam felt, there are, there are some loneliness things that we will run into that will never be solved on our own, just me and Jesus, because we weren't designed for it to be that way. We were designed to live in a human community before the Lord, with the Lord, walking together with one another, Adam and Eve at one another in the cool of the day with, with God and God inhabiting that relationship and exploding in that relationship or using those relationships, human relationships as a bridge for us, for perspective to round out the truth of what we see, not only in ourselves, but just in our worldview. And he gives gifts to us that affect not only ourselves, but those human relationships, those we are in human relationship with. So I, I want to encourage you today, have the same value for relationship that God has. Exchange the value that the world has taught us to have for relationship, which is what are we going to get out of it? And uh, what's it doing for me lately? And how much is this going to cost me? And uh, is this really worth it? 
And boy, I never, I seems like I always come out on the short end of the stick and I'm always the initiator. Okay. Those are world values. Jesus didn't think that way as a human man. What's God's value for relationship for you? I feel like God is looking down out of heaven on so many people who are genuinely experiencing what Adam experienced, loneliness, that feeling of being utterly alone. When, when there's no one else in your life that you feel really sees you, that really shares life with you. And I wanna encourage you that God is so for you. First of all, he is there, right? He's there in the middle of it. He, you, you can't escape the presence of God. He's with you right now. He'll never leave you or forsake you. And that should be a, the ultimate comfort for all of us, 100%. And yet knowing what we know now about how God designed us as human beings, I also want to encourage you that God has planned, purposed, and he's prepared primary, secondary, and auxiliary human relationships for you. He's not left you out. He's a good father. He has relationships for you through which he's going to add value into your life, through which he's going to add perspective so that those blind spots are no longer blind spots. He's going to round out your worldview and your view about yourself and others through those relationships. And he's going to bring special gifts to you that will never come into your life any other way. God has relationships for you. I finish with a, a story. My wife and I had the pr privilege of visiting some dear friends today, JR and Claudia O'Neill, and I'll just give a shout out to them. And those who are part of our church know them well. They're great, great folks. We love them. Uh, JR has had some um, physical challenges these last few years, and uh, Claudia has, has had to become his uh, full-time caretaker and it was just a privilege to go see them, call them up last minute. Hey, could we come and just take 10 minutes of your time? But we, we would love to come see you. And, you know, the, the honest truth is that we love Claudia and JR. We don't get to see them very often, but we love them. And we so enjoy. It was life to us to exchange relationship with them. Now, in, in a purely natural world, we couldn't count up the, I mean, there's not all these benchmarks that we spent so much time with them when we ate out with them or we had cookouts with them and we had, you know, we were up till three in the morning talking to them and I, I, couldn't, I couldn't recount any of that. That's not part of our story. And yet just taking the time to, to engage someone else in relationship. And, I, and to be very honest, as a pastor, you know, I could tell this story and some would say, well, you know, it's your pastoral duty to go and um, offer relationship to those who are kind of not able to get out much. And, and I would say, well, okay, I understand that. But in that, with that lens, we would look at that exchange of relationship totally different. We could be tempted to look at it as Don and I, my wife and I, in some altruistic way where giving, trying to give a gift to Claudia and JR. And our hearts are to give for sure to them. We love them, but that's, that's, not, that's not the full picture. The full picture is that we spent an hour and 15 minutes with them. Our 10 minute visit turned into an hour and 15 minutes. But we spent that time and Dawn and I left much better people because we had honest, authentic, relationship with two people that we care about. We don't get to see often. We don't have the normal natural benchmarks that we say they're, we're, the, we're best buds or best friends. Or It's irrelevant. It's relationship. And so that time with them is precious. And we walked away feeling so encouraged, so, so um, seen because they saw us. And we just, it's what so it doesn't, what, why, why did I share that? It, relationship doesn't have to be this. It doesn't have to be uh, these things that we make it to be. It's like we hold these ideals up. Like it, it has to be a David and Jonathan relationship. And then we're disappointed if it doesn't turn into that. Well, I believe he has those relationships for us. But if we're not careful, we'll dismiss what we actually have. And then we'll 
dismiss the benefit as well, that those things, those relationships we actually have should actually bring in our lives. So we walked away from that encounter with JR and Claudia today, feeling so encouraged, uplifted, empowered, happy, full of joy. And it wasn't become that natural circumstances that we walked away from them knowing that they're still living in a, in a very challenging season in their life, prayed for them and we'll continue to carry them and pray for them because we love them. But it wasn't the natural experiences that made us feel that joy. It was the exchange of real, authentic relationship. And you know, today I don't feel alone. I don't, I don't have a sense of loneliness because partly because I spent the time to go have and enjoy relationship with other human beings, not just in my prayer closet with the Lord, powerfully important. Don't, don't exchange that for anything else, but it's not good that man should be alone. And that's not between God and man, but that's between Adam and there was no one else. And so God, created a fix for that not good. And he made relationship on a human level possible. And so let me challenge you. Who has God put around you today? Who are you in close proximity with that you could have a relational encounter with? It could be a coworker, could be someone at school, could be a family member. It could be your spouse. It could be a dating relationship. It could be the guy behind the counter at the local convenience store. Maybe the gas attendant. I don't know. What I do know is there are people all around you. They're living their lives and you have the choice, the opportunity to offer and receive benefit from authentic interaction, relationship with those around you. And what I do know is that when you do that, God will come through on the bridge of those relationships. It could be as simple as a two or three sentence exchange with someone. But if it's authentic and you don't even have to ever see them again, but if that's authentic, yeah, that's a great start. And it will eat away. It will devour that sense of loneliness and it will uh, cause you to live with a gas in your tank that maybe you haven't had in a while. So, who are those folks around you that God's put you in relationship with or put you in proximity with that you get to choose to have relationship with? I believe the, the, the challenge of Jesus in some of his parables had to do with if you're faithful and little, he'll give you much. I don't mean to say that this is all a test, like every relationship is a test. And so if you do good in this one, he'll give you a deeper one. Do the what I do mean is that I do believe it's true that if we take advantage of the relationships that are in front of us, that we can have, if we're faithful in those, he will increase our territory. He will enlarge us. That's the prayer of Jabez, right? But Jabez's prayer was significant. Enlarge me so that you can enlarge my territory. So what I'm really saying is what if you and I, become enlarged in our own perspective and realize that every relationship counts. Take on God's value for relationship and invest in those relationships in appropriate measures because of due to or based on appropriate spheres, but we invest authentically with the treasures of our life. And when we offer that in whatever sphere we have, I believe God multiplies that. See, if you, if you want a friend, if you be a friend, you will have a friend. So dear ones, I love you. I appreciate um, you being with me. And uh, thank you for listening and considering God's value for relationship on a human level and accept the challenge, I pray, to, to give the gift of authentic relationship today.